All right. Well, aloha. Welcome to our 18th annual Ducks on the Beach event. My name is Kane Ingosorio. I, I graduated from the U of O in 1998 with a uh, Bachelor of Science in Psychology, and I'm the current chapter president of the Hawaii Ducks. I'm from Manoa on Oahu and currently reside in Columbia Valley with my wife, Jackie, and our two kids. We welcome all of you uh, joining us today as alumni, students, parents, staff, and friends of the University of Oregon. Uh, please introduce yourselves in the chat box right now and just um, share where you are joining us from today. So go ahead in the chat, just uh, introduce yourselves. Um, tonight's event is about bringing ducks together and connecting them back to campus and supporting students from Hawaii studying at the U of O. At the end of our event tonight, our online auction will close and all proceeds will support the Hawaii Ducks Cargill, Cargill Memorial Scholarship Fund. It's been truly amazing that we have sustained this wonderful event over the past 18 years. We normally hold it at Wildlife Country Club on Oahu, and we look forward to bringing this back in person in the future. Over these past uh, 18 years, we've awarded over 61 scholarships to freshmen and returning students from Hawaii to attend the U of O. This amounts to over $120,000 in scholarship funds. This year, we awarded a record uh, seven freshmen, four returning students, um, to a total of $22,500, the most our Hawaii Ducks chapter has ever given out. We hope to continue this effort for many years to come. We know every scholarship dollar helps our students get closer to college completion. We invite you to check out the auction website um, that Ian's going to share in the chat in a moment to bid on some wonderful items. You'll be asked to sign up before bidding if you haven't already. And you will check, um, and then you can check out the auction catalog. Note that uh, when you're outbid by someone, an email will be sent to you letting you know, uh, and then to give you an opportunity to outbid uh, that person. Um, the auction is going to close at 6:30 p.m. Hawaii time. That's 8:30 Pacific Standard Time for those of you in Oregon. Um, and items uh, closing time will automatically be extended to up to 15 minutes if bidding uh, remains active in the final minutes. If you purchase a hat or win a bid, you'll be notified by email um, within the next week. And if you live on Oahu, we will make arrangements for drop off or pickup of the items. If you live elsewhere, we will ship the item to you and the shipping cost is already built into the winning bid. And note for our two football tickets for the September 17 game against BYU that can also be applied to the uh, September 10th Eastern Washington game in case that uh, that date works better in your schedule. And unfortunately, we can't apply the tickets to the Georgia football game or any of the Pac-12 games, but we're excited. I think BYU is a great opponent and uh, that would be an awesome experience to go to that game. Um, and so uh, I'd like to share that, um, I'd also like to share that the Hawaii Ducks mission is to connect and engage all alumni, students, parents, friends of the University of Oregon together. Throughout the year, our chapter participates in the events such as football watch parties, Pauhana events, freshman send-offs, college fairs, Oregon night, student and alumni networking, and of course, Ducks on the Beach. We welcome all of you to join us and become part of our chapter and feel free to reach out to me at hawaiiducks at gmail.com if you're interested in getting more involved in the chapter. I do want to recognize our Hawaii Ducks board members for all the work that they have done to build our community and support current students from Hawaii studying at the U of O. And I'd like to first start off with Barbara Cargill, our chapter treasurer. Barbara and her husband, Dwayne Cargill, started our scholarship fund over 18 years ago. And Dwayne was a remarkable, remarkable man. And you can learn more about him at our Ducks on the Beach event page. Uh, Barbara here is pictured on the left, and you can see her on the screen and waving as well. Um, some highlights I want to uh, include about Dwayne Cargill is that he was a fullback for the Ducks football team in the early 60s under legendary coach Len Casanova. And during his freshman year, he set the record for the most carries in a game on October 29th against the Beavers. 43 carries, 172 yards, and four touchdowns, helping the Ducks uh, earn a victory over them. And he held that record for 40 years until 1999 when Ruben Jones broke it um, against playing against Arizona. 
Uh, Dwayne has had the honor of playing several bowl games during his football career at the University of Oregon. In 2001, Dwayne, the UO Athletic Department, created the Dwayne J. Cargill Award, which is presented annually to the most outstanding offensive back for their outstanding contributions on the playing field. We mahalo Barbara for the many years she has hosted the Ducks on the Beach event in person at beautiful Wildlife Country Club on Oahu. And this year, she continues to support this event, helping our chapter generate funds to the scholarship fund. Next, I'd like to recognize Patrice Lee, and uh, she's on the screen. She can wave. Hi, Patrice. Uh, Patrice has been instrumental in collecting auction donate donations and staging them for this online auction. Patrice has served as our Ducks on the Beach co-chair for many years and has also been a past president. Uh, next, we have Christina uh, Tomoso. Uh, hi, hi, Christina. Aloha. Um, she's our social media chair and has promoted this event on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We're, we encourage all of you to follow us on Hawaii Ducks uh, on all of our platforms on uh, in Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And she also helped with the design production of our Hawaii Ducks dry fit shirts back in 2020. Uh, Dara Kurubius, uh, are you there, Dara? Uh, she's our past president of our chapter and current bo board member and has helped with planning the event and donating items for the auction. Uh, Brad Tanimura, I don't know if Brad is here today, but he's a board member and helped with the design and production of our Hawaii Ducks hats, which you can purchase um, at the auction site as well. And of course, we have many other board members that have been involved. Um, I recognize uh, Brandon Kamagaki, Stephanie Donaka, uh, Marianne Jim and Clayton Jim, Kyle Santos, Paul Chan, Scott Chai, Colette Honda, uh, Jeff Sinagawa, Dexter Sonomora, Joe Stewart, and Stacey Moniz uh, representing our Hawaii Ducks. I also want to give a special shout out to Trisha uh, Kihaulani Watson. Uh, she's a, a duck parent and she made some generous donations to this event as well as Alexis Cross of the Women in Flight Program. Um, their organization uh, donated a number of items to the auction. I also wanna mahalo Erin uh, Hagen, our Associate Director of Alumni Engagement. Um, she's an instrumental in our event uh, planning with our online auction videos and program script. We greatly appreciate her support. And I also want to mahalo Ian uh, Sikord from the UOAA, and she's helping us today in the back end of Zoom. I want to take this time. I want to see if we have any of our UO Hui of Hawaii student officers in attendance. A few of them signed up, and if they are, I would like to give them a chance to introduce themselves. I don't see them though, so I think we'll move on. But hopefully, we'll have a chance to uh, meet some of our uh, Hawaii Club uh, members tonight at some point. Okay, so now. Uh, let me turn the floor over to our executive director of the UO Alumni Association, Rafe Beck, for the update from the UOAA. Thank you, Kane. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. Aloha, everyone. Uh, when I say it's my pleasure to be here, of course, I would much rather be meeting in person, and I would really much rather be meeting in person in Honolulu. But I will take as a runner up to be able to see some of your smiling faces on Zoom, and uh, I want to give a big thanks uh, to all of our Hawaii chapter volunteers, just echoing what Kane has said, and to add Kane to that group. Thank you, Kane, Christina, Barbara, uh, Patrice, Dara, um, everyone. Um, thank you, uh, including all the, the wonderful chapter volunteers who aren't on the call right now. Um, that photo that uh, Kane had, had shown of the chapter of volunteers altogether was a photo from two years ago where the chapter of volunteers collectively won the Gene Johnson Alumni Service Award, which is given to often an individual, but in this case, a, in a group of people who have given so generously uh, towards the UO alumni and is our highest alumni volunteer award at the Alumni Association. So just wanna recognize that group once again. And I wanna thank you for keeping such a strong sense of community in Hawaii among our duck family, um, in particular during these tough uh, pandemic years. So thank you all of you. We really appreciate that. I just want to say a, a couple of words uh, uh, about kind of what's the latest on campus. 
Um, as it happens, I've spent much of the day with Kane, although virtually. Um, Kane serves as a board member on the UOA board of directors. That's our, that's our uh, university-wide board. And this is Kane's uh, first year on that board. Um, and it's the first time in a couple of years that we've had representation from Hawaii. And I'm really glad that we do. It's really important to us that we have representation, particularly from our most active chapters and our most populous regions and, and Hawaii counts as both. So thank you, Connie, for your continued service on that board. Um, just to give you an idea of some of the things that that board is doing both in Eugene and virtually today, we got to tour a couple of new spaces. And so I hope if you all are not in Eugene that the next time you come back to campus, you have a chance to see. Uh, we have a brand new welcome center that opened this fall. It's built into the new Unthink dorm, which is a, a dormitory uh, just next to the Alumni Center, we were just a few steps away. And on the bottom floor is a new welcome center. And that's the really the starting place for uh, prospective students and admitted students and their families when they come to campus. And I highly recommend if you if you find yourself on campus to stop by the new Welcome Center and check it out. It's a it's a wonderful, um, I think it's a wonderful introduction for people new to Oregon, but I also think it's a wonderful celebration of the university for those of us who are already part of the family. Uh, and it's a great place to get a bite to eat right next door in the new public market. So I recommend the new Unthank Hall to you. We also got the chance to tour the uh, brand, no, well, I can't say brand new anymore, but very new Hayward Field. And if you haven't had a chance to get back to Hayward um, since it was rebuilt a couple of years ago, it's just a, a marvelous place. We spent a lot of time in the museum, which talks about the history of both Hayward and the amazing track and field program at Oregon. Uh, what, a, what a treat that was. Um, among other things we'll do tomorrow, we're spending a, a lot of time with current students at this meeting, and tomorrow we're going to talk to students who, are, among others, who are recipients of various UOAA and chapter scholarships, and we're expecting to see one or two students who have received the Cargill, or current recipients of the Cargill scholarship, so very excited to uh, get to know those students a little bit better. Thank, I thank all of you who have contributed to that those scholarship efforts in the in the past, um, including at events like like Ducks on the Beach, where the proceeds are going towards the scholarship, and just really wonderful to enable the education and the scholarship for those students from Hawaii. Uh, a couple of other things I mentioned. I'm gonna I'm gonna mention something without really mentioning it. Um, and I'm gonna be a little cryptic because I'm not allowed to fully tell you what I want to tell you, which is that next week there's a really exciting and kind of big deal announcement coming from the university and one that I think will make uh, you, uh, those of you who are all part of the Duck family really proud of what Oregon is doing and where the uh, institution is going. That announcement is coming Tuesday morning. Um, I like to tell people it's coming early Tuesday morning. It's coming really early for those of you who are in Hawaii, um, about 7 a.m. You'll receive a, a heads up that it's coming on Monday, but I'm telling you now that that heads up will tell you um, you may want to tune in at 7 a.m. on Tuesday um, for a special announcement. And I'm not allowed to tell you anything else except I think you will be proud of the, U or I should say, you will be even more proud of Oregon than you already are. So Tuesday at 7 a.m., a really special announcement. Uh, with that, I would just say, um, you know, I think we're all looking forward to the days where we are probably using Zoom a little less and seeing and connecting with people in person a little more. And, uh, and I look forward to getting on a plane uh, to see you all in person to do that more often. Um, but in the meantime, I, I just wanna tell you about one program that's become very popular at the Alumni Association during the pandemic, and that's our Alumni Book Club. We read about five books a year. The, the members of the club get to, I call it a club. It's about 700 alumni who have signed up to vote on the next book and then uh, exchange um, reactions to each book we read. And we just have a wonderful diverse group of books that we've been devouring over the last two years and continue to. So if you're a, if you're a reader, we mostly read fiction. Um, if you're a reader and would like to be part of that book club, I encourage you to join the alumni book club. With that, that kind of concludes my report from campus. It is now my uh, great pleasure to introduce our featured speaker tonight, Bev Smith. Um, first note before my introduction, after Bev's talk, there'll be a, an opportunity to ask questions. And I encourage you to use the chat feature to type your questions during while Bev is speaking if things come up. And Connie will, will kind of facilitate the, um, that conversation with Bev after her remarks. 
a little bit about Bev Smith. Beverly Smith graduated from the UO in 1988 with a Bachelor's of Science degree in Human Performance. Her dedication as a student was, of course, rivaled only by her dedication as a basketball player, which as she became a two-time Kodak All-Champion. Later, she went on to act as the UO women's basketball team's beloved coach, leading them to victory in the 2002 National Invitation Tournament. Beverly has seen the Olympic stage and coached long-term in both Italy and Canada, helping players achieve the titles they always dreamed of. Today, she joins us as the managing director of Civic Park in Eugene and the executive director of Emerald Kids Sports. Her love for the sport is equal only to the love for her alma mater, and we are grateful to have her here today. I welcome Bev Smith. Thank you so much for that great introduction. Um, very honored to be here tonight. And, um, you know, uh, I'm a Canuck duck, and so uh, I'm not on a beautiful paradise island such as Hawaii. I'm from the true north and uh, certainly understand, you know, the distance from which people travel to attend the University of Oregon. And um, 41 years ago, I attended the University of Oregon on a student athlete scholarship, which was quite a big deal for me. Um, I was from a small town Canada, and uh, I wouldn't have been able to attend, uh, you know, a higher educational institution without that scholarship assistance. And um, it's really important to me that I think we understand that scholarships assistance is really just an opportunity for children um, to aspire to more and then for students to have an op opportunity and a chance to get a higher education. Um, you know, I think I was, the reason I was able to get a, a, a scholarship at the University of Oregon was because of Title IX. And Title IX was an education amendment that uh, let, was passed in 1972. And really a lot of people now in this day and age think that it was an athletic uh, legislation and it was really an educational amendment that made a big difference in the lives of not only girls and women, but in, in, in lives of all kinds of students who were looking to access higher education. And I find it really ironic that the two major legislators that were responsible for Title IX were two Oregon, two senators, one from Oregon, Edith Green, and one from Hawaii, Patsy Mink. And just talking about the University of Oregon and, and the Hawaii uh, Alumni Association, I think makes a really great um, sort of appeal to furthering what they really, for a better word, had the proverbial balls to do back in 1979 is to create this legislation and then kick it off into the legislature and it really was passed. And they were very subtle and they were very diplomatic because a lot of the athletic directors back in the day didn't realize that this would affect athletics. It was an educational amendment and it has impacted the opportunity for young girls and women such as myself to be able to pursue higher education that I might not have ever been able to do otherwise. And so what I think is a little bit of a misunderstanding of Title IX is that it was an amendment to education to allow not only men, or excuse me, women, but men as well, to be able to pursue sort of non-traditional gender careers. So for example, in 1972, only 7% um, of all women had law degrees and only 9% had medical degrees. Um, now that Title IX has been in sort of operation for 50 years, 50% 50 of women are in law degrees and 50% of women are have medical degrees. There used to be a quota prior to 1972 that for example, law uh, would only allow 20 or five women in. And even though their GPA was higher than some of the 30 men that were allowed in, um, the quota was reached and they weren't able to access that higher education in those areas. But it was also an, an education amendment that allowed men and uh, males to also enter non-traditional male careers such as nursing and teaching in which there were quotas for, for men to be allowed into those careers. And so not, Title IX has been an incredible, I believe, um, a, you know, legislation that has helped help to advance um, opportunities for all genders, both male and female. And I think we're certainly better off for it. And I know I'm better off because I was able to come to the University of Oregon as a student athlete. 
And it changed my life. The University of Warrior experience both on the floor in old Mac court that some of you may not be familiar with and some of you may be familiar with. In my opinion, it was the best place to play a game of basketball in the entire universe. Um, Matthew Knight is, is really an incredible facility, but there's nothing that was more intimate and more um, just hot and intense than, than, than Mac Court when, when, when we particularly played in it. And so my, my experience both as an athlete and as a student at the University of Oregon was life-changing. I knew two things when I came to the University of Oregon. One, I really wanted to become the best basketball player in the world, which I soon grew to learn that wasn't totally in my control. And two, I just wanted to make my family and the investors in my scholarship proud of all the work and all the um, studying that I was going to do to make sure that I got a degree that would help then help me add value to the world when I came out um, from, from after my graduation as a student athlete. Um, I think my four years here were just very, very short in a lifespan that I'm now 62. And, and so, but they're very bright years because I think the University of Oregon has professors and, and an environment where they create a curiosity in learning um, that is different than, than most universities. And um, I think having an academic or an athletic scholarship or certainly a scholarship that you are providing Hawaiian students with is, is, is deserving because I think you, will, you make students earn it in certain ways that they have to perform in terms of their high school grades and, and maybe characteristics that you look um, to find. But it's also we, as the recipients of those scholarship dollars, we need to be proud and we need to be determined that we, we do the best that we can to really make the most out of that investment that people have given us. And sometimes we don't even know who these people are. In 1978 through to 1982, we didn't have alumni events or we didn't have athletic events where we as student athletes got to meet the investors who put money and time and consideration into us as students. And so for us to be able to talk to each other and tell our stories, unfortunately through Zoom during this sort of pandemic, um, I think is really important because um, the stories really create opportunities for people to feel like they do have a chance. I came from a one pony town in the middle of, of a British Columbia, of the province of British Columbia, and I was able to really, um, have an impact on my university, both as a student athlete. And I didn't ever understand that I could have that, but the investment by donors in 1978 to provide me with a full ride athletic scholarship was something that was incredibly important to me and I have cherished for the rest of my life. Um, I think that, you know, my four years at Oregon were incredible. We played at we played at Mac Court my freshman year. We were undefeated throughout that year. And uh, we uh, connected with fans. We brought in a lot of people. We played the Korean national team that brought in 5,000 fans. We were undefeated. And then we played Oregon State, those Beavers, for the third time in the championship. And we actually lost that game. So we couldn't go on to postseason. And I remember after the game, I was talking to my dad. And he said, you know, Bev, this is all about which I think is a great lesson for all of us is that you can have it all or you can have it now. You just can't have it all now. And I thought, wow, that's a lot for an 18 year old. But um, it was a lesson that made me understand that there's more to do, there's more to apply yourself. You need to continue to take advantage of this investment that other people have in you and be better on the other side of it. And for students who are not involved in athletics, you know, there's no shortcuts. You got to get through the messy. You got to get through the hard studying hours. You got to get through the long sort of time it takes you to understand what being an athlete, what being a student is all about. And I, and I really learned through my experience, and I hope that this resonates with other alumni and maybe with students of today, that being at Oregon um, is all about 
is the experience what you get when you don't get what you want. If you fail a test, you learn from it. If you, you know, get beaten in a big game, you learn from it. And so you have to continue to find that resiliency, find that um, energy, find that desire and that passion to continue on through those dark moments that we all have. And we certainly had as student athletes here at the Oregon. And um, I think what, what, a, what a scholarship does, whether it's academic or athletic, is it becomes not transactional in the funds that you receive to attend the university, but it's transformational. You get a chance to get in the door. And now it's up to you. You have to earn your grades. You have to earn that ability to be a great student athlete. Um, we often talk about as a student athlete, you're not in the classroom. Your test is in front of everyone. You can't sort of hide it with you and your professor. Everybody in that arena sees if you're successful or if you're not. And so those moments are, are really, I think, all about testing your mettle and finding ways to then respond in a way. And also when you're successful on a test or you're successful in a game, you just can't live off those alkaloids. You have to continue to get better and to be, continue to respond to the challenges. Um, one of the things I, I've looked at with your alumni association is last year, you provided $24,000 for 11 students to attend the University of Oregon. I think that is just incredible. And I, I hope this year that somehow we can find a way to get maybe 15 athletes or students to the University of Oregon, because I'm telling you, um, I know that I am a different person. I am a, a person that has been able to be a coach, and now I'm into management, I'm into administration, I'm reading uh, profit and loss uh, accounting statements because of what I learned at the University of Oregon, both in the classroom and on the court. And I think it's really important that we remember those people who fought for us. I, I think of Patsy Mink and Edith um, Green all the time, because really, if we look at where Title IX has come and the advancement of women, not only in law and medicine, but we look at, we have a WNBA, we have Serena Williams, who is one of the top, you know, salary makers in terms of athletes. The United States women's soccer uh, team just won um, their right to have equal pay. We don't even have an equal pay amendment for women in general. And so the ability of the University of Oregon's education to make an impact on our collective worlds, I think is worth the price. So if you're bidding on an auction item, bid it up as high as you can do. If you can contribute to the University of Oregon's alumni ducks on the beach, please do so because it does change lives. And I'm here to tell you that I was one of those lives that was changed from you know, a small kid from a small town coming to be now the managing director of Civic Park. You know, a big title for a small person that someone believed in so many years ago to provide scholarship assistance to give me an opportunity um, to change my life and hopefully have a positive impact on the world around me. So thank you for having me here. I apologize for my voice. It's a little bit of a coaching voice tonight and a little bit of a, of a cold. I do not have COVID. I do have a normal cold that we always seem to have gotten during the year. Um, but I'm just really appreciative of your association um, for providing opportunities for students from Hawaii to get a great world experience here at the University of Oregon. Thank you so much, Bev, for that uh, awesome journey, you know, just sharing your stories as a student and coach over the years. We, we wanna open this up uh, for questions and seeing how we have a kind of a smaller group. If anyone feels comfortable, they can um, unmute and ask their question directly. Or uh, if you feel more comfortable, you can put it in the chat. But um, does anyone have a question? I'll, I'll ask a question. Since you are sort of an icon when it comes to basketball at Oregon, what is your favorite memory of the basketball team? 
of something that happened, whether it was a game or a, a moment backstage in the locker room, what is your favorite memory of your time? Well, I have a lot of them. Um, I really, you know, did have a great experience here. I think one of the favorite memories I did have was as a freshman, because my sister also played here. And when she played a year before me, she's four years older than I am. She wasn't allowed to, they weren't allowed to practice and play at Mac court. And they were in Girlinger Annex. And when in 1978, when I came down, we actually got permission to play and practice at Mac court. And we, we would often play in front of the men. So, so people would have to have a men's ticket to come and watch us play. And they would often get there early so they could get their seats. Students would come in early so they could get their seats for the men's game. And they often, all of a sudden started to go, wait a minute, this is actually kind of fun and this is kind of exciting. And um, we were a pretty successful team and a pretty entertaining team. And we ended up through that year getting our own marquee. So that meant we got an opportunity to play without being the pre-game to the men. And we played the South Korean national team that was probably third in the world at that time. It was ready, getting ready to host the 1979 World Championships in Seoul. And so um, we played this game. Uh, the athletic department did a great job of getting almost 5,000 people there. We ended up winning by one point in a last second game. And it just set the stage for the rest of my three years here at Oregon that we had a chance to show people 5,000 people that we could be as entertaining, we could be as hardworking, we could be as fun to watch as the men. And therefore we deserve that opportunity to have our own marquee. So it was really a watershed moment for our team in the belief that we had in each other. And the community of Eugene responded and said, we don't wanna to go to the men's games before the women's games. We wanna play, we wanna watch our women's teams play, which is not being dismissive of the men's game, but just being more acknowledging that the women's game has had an entertaining value and an opportunity actually to make revenue where it was never considered that it had that opportunity in the past. So that was one of those moments that really felt like, dang it, go Ducks. That's awesome, Bev. Here's, here's another question that came in. Oh, uh, Mike, did you have a question? I see. You raise, you have to unmute, Mike. Okay. Can you hear me now? We can hear you. Good. How do you feel about the other new change occurring uh, for more uh, financial um, pain of college athletes? You know, the football players uh, want money for their jerseys, et cetera. Great question, Mike. It's uh, the NLI name, image, and likeness. You know, um, <clears throat> when I went to the University of Oregon, my, I, I lived off campus, so my college stipend was $102 a month, and from which I had to pay rent, and I had to eat, and at that time, we didn't have our books bought for us, so by the end of the month, um, we were pretty low on food. We were pretty low, and I can say that that the scholarship right now that University of Oregon student athletes get, there's no doubt in my mind, it's very generous. It really is. It's, you know, it's, it's a big price. Um, I think it's $175,000 or whatever it is a year. And so there's no doubt in my mind that the student athletes are getting a pretty good deal in terms of what the university gives them in order to allow them to play college athletics. I can say there's a disconnect with, you know, what we're paying our coaches and, and the amount of money that they do get and their ability just to go in and out of their contracts. You as an athlete have to commit for four years. You can be with a program and your coach leaves. There's all kinds of hurdles you have to jump over as a student athlete to then be able to maybe transfer. And so I think um, the NC2A has been a big bluff machine for a long time. And I think people legally are now saying, no, this is not right. I do agree that the NLI poses some great confusion because if I'm a donor giving to athletic scholarships for the athletic department, I'm thinking, why should I continue to do that when these students 
have the opportunity now to create their own revenue. But I will caution everyone that there's only like, I would imagine two or three of these student athletes that are going to make anything that is above and beyond $100,000 a year. Um, and that most non-revenue student athletes will not have that opportunity. So it really seems like it's a little bit non-equitable in that regard. And I think there's a lot of confusion. And I think right now the NC2A has not really understood what the parameters are of NIL and people are going over boundaries left, right, and center. The NC2A is bringing them back. I think it's gonna be a little bit of a mess for a long time, but I think that student athletes have some right to the amount of money that athletic departments and the NC2A in particular, not just athletic departments, but the NC2A in particular is making um, on the back of the student athlete. Thank you. You're welcome. Great, great question, Michael. Any other questions from the audience? You know, like I hear a lot for like men's sports, like the transfer portal has been really just exploded over like the last year for football. And I think basketball too is, it's pretty, um, it, it, I don't follow, um, the women's sports as much, but does, uh, has that been something that's been, become a big thing too, where uh, women athletes are kind of transferring quite, uh, quite a bit more now than they did in previous, previous years? Yes, the portal has become that opportunity. And I think the portal, in my humble opinion, was just another um, way the NC2A was trying to appease some of the pressure that student athletes were putting on the NC2A to allow you know, student athletes to get paid for what they're actually doing. So it was another sort of opportunity for the NC2A said to say, look, we'll give you this. Because in a sense, it was difficult to transfer. You, you, you have a child, you have a student that signs up for four years and their, in a, their, their national um, letter of intent is for four years, but it, it's on a annual renewal basis. And so if you're a student athlete and you've signed up for a school, you can let go by a coach who finds your performance or finds you not rising to those standards. Um, and so you can lose out on that scholarship if in fact they over recruit for you. And, you know, coaches leave programs all the time. We've seen that here at Oregon in both, mostly in our football program. And so as a student athlete, I sign up with that coach because I believe in their mission. They convinced me to come here. And now I'm not able to transfer without a punishment of sitting out a year. So the portal allows a one-time transfer without paying that sort of consequence of sitting out a year before you do transfer. And I think, in my opinion, um, I think we're gonna get used to that. I think it's just an opportunity for student athletes if they are unhappy to, I don't, you know, I don't believe a regular student when they decide to transfer, you know, can't, has to sit out a year and not study for a year and, and sit on the sidelines because they weren't happy with, you know, the situation that presented itself. Are there going to be some student athletes that at the first, you know, adverse moment with a coach who's telling them, look, you got to get better, want to say, well, I'm going to go to an easier place? Yes, that's just human nature and we're going to have to deal with that. But um, I think the portal also helps people to find places that are um, more in tune with what they're doing. I've seen three University of Oregon women's basketball players in the portal transfer, and all three of them are making huge impacts in their new on their new team. And sometimes it's just not a fit. And sometimes that student athlete is going to be able to really bloom and prosper in a new situation that perhaps they weren't in their in their in their situation that they first signed up for. Thank you so much, Bev. That uh, this is so interesting to learn more about these. Um, these issues and stuff that are impacting women's sports today. For those that um, want to continue the conversation with Bev, in a, in a little bit, we're going to have a breakout session where you can pick between three rooms. So room one's going to be uh, continuing con continuing the conversation with Bev Smith. 
I see the shout out from uh, Curtis Moriyama in the chat. He's one of our longtime uh, Duck fans, mm -hmm. and he works. Uh, he's a sports editor for the Honolulu Star Advertiser, so he's going to be interested in connecting you with you more, Bev. But that will be bre breakout one. Um, breakout two is going to be for those that are interested in getting more involved with the Hawaii Ducks. So I'll, I'll be there. And then for those that just want to network and meet other ducks, uh, you can go to breakout three uh, with with Christina. But before we get to that, we just want to remind everyone the auction's still live and going, and it's going to be open until six thirty. So you can continue to um, check out the auction site. Uh, Ian just put in the chat the link to the auction site, and there are a few items that no one's bid on yet. So this is an opportunity to. to Sneak in There's there some and just great grab. items that are on there that you can get for real cheap if you get in there and get your bid in. So yeah. jump in it. Jump in and, and get uh, get this. I, and of course, all the proceeds will be benefiting uh, U, U of students um, to attend U of uh, U of O or students from Hawaii to attend U of O. So uh, please support the auction. Before we do that, though, we have some uh, swag box uh, prizes to give out. Uh, random drawing that Christina is going to give out three winners. And if you're on Oahu, we'll make arrangements to uh, give it to you. Uh, if you're not on Oahu, we will uh, ship it to you. Uh, so, uh, Christina, do you have uh, the first winner? I do. Yes, I had to kind of scramble a little bit to do some more random picking because uh, you have to be present to win, just like you would if we were in person. So only the people who are on the call today can actually win. So the first winner of the swag box, and the swag box has a mask that has um, a Duck Alumni logo on it. It has a water bottle. It has a luggage tag, and it has uh, a hat, which is super cool. I wear my Duck Alumni hat all the time. Um, and uh, the first winner is going to be Michael. And Michael, I believe you Kimball. chimed. Yep. Awesome. So he, he, he gets the first swag box. And then the second win, winner is Cheryl uh, Tamora. Cheryl Tamora. Cheryl, I see you're still on. You don't have to turn your video on if you don't want to, but congratulations. And then our third winner is going to be Curtis Murayama. So Curtis, right, I believe Curtis. you're still on too. So yay. Congratulations to our oh, winners. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so we'll make arrangements after uh, over the next week. We'll reach out to you for those. And we still have more uh, swag box winners. And there's also a grand prize at the end. So you have to stay to the end of the uh, meeting today. We have uh, a <laughs> little over a half hour left to go. So and Connie, I know who's who's winning, yeah. so I'm watching you. <laughs> Connie, you know where I live already, right? Yeah, I know where you yeah, live, Chris. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And you guys don't know that Tony's a good runner. I see him in the results all this time. He runs every weekend, I think. And his name always pops up in the age group results <laughs> for his age. You know, one of the top two or three people running. So, hey, congratulations for you on that. Thank you, Chris. So let's see. Uh, we're going to have um, Aaron. Are the uh, breakouts going to pop up here? We're going to. Um, OK, so we have breakouts one, two, and three. I think in your controls, do you just Okay, here we go. So you, you'll be able to go and join. Um, there should be a pop up box box. So I'm going to go ahead and go to two. And the, uh, Aaron will stay back in case any of you have trouble um, uh, connecting to one of the breakout rooms, but we'll be on for about 15 minutes to introduce each other and just talk story for a little bit. All right, we're coming back to the main room here. Hope all of you had a great uh, discussion in your breakouts. I want to mahalo Bev. I don't, I don't know if Bev had to step away, but I know she she has um, some basketball games to attend to tonight. So thank you so much, Bev, for, for your um, time today and just sharing your uh, story and your wisdom. And there's so much, much, so much to learn from you. And you're like an icon for, uh, for Oregon sports history. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm honored to always be involved uh, with any alumni association. I think you all do a great job. Thank you for your dedication and your support. I mean, our kids really need it right now. They need to have opportunities and any chance that we can give them to sort of grow and accelerate, uh, I think is really important. So thank you for all you do. And thank you for everyone. I, I really enjoyed myself. And so I'll go out and try to keep them all in line and in going in the right direction. Thank you, Bev.
You're welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Bev. So for all of you, uh, don't forget to make your final bids uh, for the silent auction. We've got a little less than a half hour left um, and your donations are gonna support a great cause. Christina, have you been monitoring it? We've got some items that um, haven't been bid on yet that maybe we need to talk a little bit about. Sure, so there's, so from what I can see, there are currently three items that haven't been bid on yet. One of them was a donation from uh, the College Ar Collegiate Art Designs, which is a super cool, I don't know if you've seen like, you know, on social media, they have that really giant O that like sits on a chain that's sort of like a, a metal plate. Um, and then there's a magnet, that's there, it's this laser cut metal yeah. magnet, and then a, um, it's like a plaque that goes on a wall that's that's laser cut metal they're super super cool that one hasn't been bid on yet um and then uh there's another one from tanoa which is a local uh, uh clothing company and there's a 50 dollars gift card in that one as well as some face masks that have a super cool design and um it also has a, a perero in it uh that is a really nice yellow color really very nice and then the other item that hasn't been bid on yet i think is super cool too um this is a little bit more geared toward like a, a younger kid um maybe kind of middle school maybe older elementary school depending on how big your children are um, but it's a, a black long sleeve shirt with an organ dunk funko pop figurine which is super cute um and then there's also a rose bowl um autograph football it doesn't have an autograph on it but it has a space because it's white and you can get people to autograph it for you and then there's also some organ sports gloves some like running back catching gloves that would be really good for anybody who's got kids or nephews or uh fr kids friends that are playing football Patrice, you looked like you wanted to pot pipe up with something. Did I get something wrong? No, actually, I was, I was about to bid on that. <laughs> oh, yeah, you, I'm, I'm sorry. Don't <laughs> bid on that. There's no, it's totally taken. <laughs> no, my, I think my son is going to like the gloves, so. He, he will. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so check out those items. We have just a few more minutes left of the auction. And uh, Christina, did you want to announce a couple more swag box winners? Sure. So the last two swag boxes that we have, uh, box number four is going to Samantha Grant. Ooh, Samantha. Samantha. Which actually, Samantha, do you already have a box? Because I think you were on that volunteer alumni call. I don't think so. I oh, don't, yay. I don't think so, but yay, thank you. Yeah, you'll love it. It's got some great stuff in it for sure. And then Wade, Wade, you are our other winner. Yay. Hey. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we will announce the uh, grand prize uh, uh, raffle prize at the at the end of the call today. OK, thank you so much, Christina. Uh, this year, so this year, our chapter award 11 scholarships to students from Hawaii studying at the U of O, which includes uh, seven freshmen and four returning students. So Aaron is sharing the um, students right there that are listed. And I think we're going to uh, about to go into a video uh, from them. So please enjoy the video coming up. We want to uh, thank um, is it Her Hermia, uh, Christina, Talia, Marcella with the Student Alumni Association for helping to capture the stories of our scholarship recipients to share at Ducks on the Beach. So we can go ahead and cue that video up now. Thank you so much, Aaron. And just give us a little time while we uh, get it all squared away. All right, Connie, it's just going to take me one minute to get the right one up. No problem. And then just to kind of preview, we've got um, a second breakout coming up after the video. We'll uh, have choices to uh, talk about uh, Oregon women's basketball with Patrice, or in breakout two, uh, talk about the football team 
with Christina. There's a lot of changes going on with the football team. And the third one will be a talk about current camp, uh, events on campus. So I think we're all ready to go. So uh, please enjoy the video. Uh, I'm Blaze Baracchio. Uh, I'm here at the University of Oregon, and currently I have a business major. Uh, I'm from Oahu, Hawaii, and a fun fact about me was that the first country that I ever visited outside of America was the Philippines. My name is Makana Huddleston. I'm from Hilo, Hawaii. Um, I'm a freshman here at UO, and I'm a business major with a concentration in sports business. And a fun fact about me is that my legal first name is actually 30 letters long. So, my name is Cody Caprera. I'm currently double majoring in psychology and culture anthropology. I am currently a freshman of the year 2025. Uh, one fun fact about myself is that I worked on Kai Kahele's um, campaign for senator. Um, my name is Katie Bell Jose. I'm a current junior majoring in cinema studies with a double minor in business and Korean. I'm from Pukalani, Maui. And a fun fact about me is I love going to the beach 24-7. <laughs> I think what makes me feel like I belong here at UO is having so many diverse people. It like brings a sense of like since everyone's from a different place in the world, it's to be able to all be here in one place and have connections and be able to have similar things, it definitely brings a sense of community for me. My best memory here at the University of Oregon, well, it's definitely the games, but especially the, the rivalry game here. I was able to find really close seats because we went early. And it was a lot of fun. You know, we actually won the game, which was awesome. Beat the Beavers, thank God. And it was just a lot of fun that entire time. So this scholarship is really personal to me because aside from other scholarships, it's from my, like, my home state. And so I, it's really touching that people from Hawaii like believe in me and know that they'll support me through all my ambitions. And it's, it's just really heartwarming and I really appreciate their support. Uh, the Hawaii Ducks, I would like to say thank you for all your donations. Uh, it really helped me bring me to the, where I am today. And without you, I wouldn't be here. That was an awesome video. I just love those students and their passion and just appreciation for the scholarships and really look forward to seeing uh, what they'll be doing in the coming years. And it's been awesome this year too. Like we've, uh, our chapter has been able to connect with the uh, UO Hawaii um, chapter officers to plan some some things. And they're, uh, they're actually planning their uh, luau, I think scheduled in-person luau um, on campus, I think at Mac Court. I think I, I didn't realize Mac Court still had events, but that's scheduled for May uh, May twenty first, I believe. And uh, really looking forward to that. Our, our, our chapters uh, uh, was given some money to help support their um, their efforts there, and we're look, looking forward to doing continuing to do things with with the chapter. We recently had a, a networking event where we had um, professionals connect with students and sort of had this speed networking event and. Uh, within an hour, you got to connect with uh, six students, and that was awesome. Like we, we're just talk, talking story, learning more about uh, each other, and just sort of uh, providing any kind of uh, support or advice and um, opportunities for them to uh, learn and grow. So, we hope to continue to do stuff like that with with the um, with the club, and uh, really hope they have an awesome luau this year to, to bring it back in person. So uh, let's see. We're gonna we're gonna move now into our second breakout. We just have um, our these are the two top uh, three topics. So room one uh, talk about Oregon women's basketball with Patrice. Number two uh, talk about the football team with Christina, and number three talk about current events on campus. And I think I might need Rafe's help with that. I was I was hoping we'd have some students. <laughs> For, for breakout three, but um, yeah, please, um, please join one of the breakout rooms. All right, we're coming back here. This is awesome. This was uh, one of our Ducks on the Beach events that we had a few years ago at Wildlife Country Club. 
Look at the attendance there. I love the waiter that's stuck in the middle. And so, <laughs> like, okay. You know what's funny is I'm, I'm actually okay, sitting right, right, I'm sitting right behind him, but doesn't he look like <laughs> really like uncomfortable? Oh. <laughs> uh. Well, it's about that time. I think we want to announce the uh, the big grand prize winner. Is the prize I, a little different, Christina? Oh yeah. So um, uh, we we had posted a picture of it on social media, but the 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 prize for the grand prize is sort of like the ultimate Doc swag kit. Um, it has like a barbecue set with like an Oregon Docs logo on like all of the utensils and the tools. It's got two different shirts, two different hats, like some koozies, the luggage tag. I think there's like a cool like wow. duck jerseys, like to go grocery bag type of a thing. So it's got a lot of fun smart. stuff in it. What was that? Zippy's gift card, I think, is in there oh, too. Oh, Zippy's. Is there a Zippy's one in there too? Yeah. Um, so the 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 good news is is that the person who won, who I randomly picked through Google number generator is still on the call. So we can all say congratulations to Nathan. You are the winner of the grand raffle prize. Wow. Congratulations, <laughs> Nathan. All right. Yay, congratulations. Thank you. Nathan. Thank you. Thank you. After all these years, won something. <laughs> Congratulations. So we're getting close to the end of the auction. There's just a few minutes left. We want to um, mahalo everyone who's bidded on an item or purchased on a, purchased a Hawaii Ducks hat. Christina, how's it looking? Do we, is there anything we need to um, point out right now? I think the tickets, football tickets are $145. How's the market? It went up to 150 $150. Yeah, the, the football is still only at 195 so um, someone could bring home their own autographed Marcus Mariota football for just $200 if they want to get their bid in right now. I see the um, the fashionable duck one. No one's bidded on that, so that's something the um, And that has an a $50 gift card in it, so if you bid that $60, which is the minimum bid right now, you go home with a $50 gift card plus all the other stuff mm -hmm. that's already in there. Seems like a, a can't lose opportunity there. For sure. Anything else that hasn't gotten a bid? Nope, everything... that's the only one that hasn't gotten the bid. Everything else has a bid. So that's I think that's really good. And of course, uh, the the uh, hats, the um, truck uh, trucker hats. If any of you are interested to purchase, we have it, them in green and, and gray yeah. colors. And those aren't a bid. You just buy it outright. So you can just take one yeah. home if you want one. And that includes the shipping cost. So uh, it does, yeah. again, again, everything that you bid on uh, and win, if if we have to ship it to you, we will, and uh, you don't have to worry about that. It's that included cost. in the cost of the auction bid, right, Kane? Right. Yeah. And then if you happen to live on Oahu, we'll we'll make arrangements for some kind of drop off or pickup, depending on where you live. Oh, the other thing I wanted to say too is that let me refresh here real quick. So there are there's still an opportunity to go ahead and just make a direct donation to our scholarship fund. We're currently at 63% of the goal that we set for this year. So in just scholarship money, we've earned a total of $1,270 um, towards the scholarship fund. So there's still an opportunity to go into the, the website and um, and go ahead and, and donate directly to that as well. So you know, we made the recommendation that there was a $25 recommended donation to attend tonight. Obviously, it wasn't required, but, you know, every little bit helps. So go in and donate $10, $15, $20 and, you know, put the support behind those students who are very, you could hear from their videos, super appreciative of the scholarships that we've been able to provide them. And that's awesome because like 1500 I think, is the uh, freshman scholarship. And then for returning students, we, we award three, uh, I think $3,000. So we really try to help those students try to finish off their, their, um, their college and stuff like that. So yeah, when I continue to build off that, like as Bev said, you know, we did 11 uh, scholarships this year. Ho hopefully we can get to 15, but I uh, want to mahalo all of you for attending today, attending the event. Um, we ho do hope to bring this back in person in the future. And so, um, yeah, it, it's going to be so uh, so much nicer when we're back at the Wildlife Country Club again and 
enjoying the food and the festivities and having uh, Rafe and Aaron and Ian come down and others from Oregon to make that trip to Hawaii. So we're definitely looking forward to that uh, next year. But uh, again, mahalo all, all of you for attending today. We hope you have awesome weekend and uh, safe. Can we, with can your, we have everybody family. come on screen real quick and uh, try to get a group shot of everybody? I'm going to turn your yeah, camera on and that. I'll do it real quick. Do you want us to do like an O sign or a shot? I think, Aaron, you have to unspotlight us so I can see everybody. Yep. Sorry, I don't have a camera on my my work desktop. That's okay. <laughs> That's all right. It's okay. You're you're in here here in spirit, uh, Curtis. Your your picture. Okay, I can see everybody who has turned on their camera at this point. So this is great. So yeah, if everybody wants to throw the O, I won't be able to because I'll be taking the screenshot. So I'm just going to smile real quick. And it freezes the screen. So don't worry if you move. So I'm going to count to three and then I'm going to click the button. Okay, ready? One, hey. two, three, go Ducks. So. Thank you everybody for coming today. Oh, that looks really good. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you. Go Ducks. Go Ducks. Go Ducks. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Rafe and, and Ian. Thank you, everybody.